If you're seriously ill or critically injured. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? He's struggling to breathe. Very seriously injured. In some of the UK's most remote places. Oh, 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 I can't, oh yeah. Stay on the way now and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. There's just been an accident on the M1 motorway. It's on fire and it's gone into the railway bridge. Your life is on the line. How far did he fall? About five metres. He's intubated and ventilated. You need some of Britain's most elite medics. Is there any serious bleeding? Yes, there is, yeah. Calm, feel, legs, anything below my neck. We're in a remote location in the middle of the woodland. They've broken their back. The speed of the Yorkshire Air Ambulance can make the difference between life and death. For your discretion, take off. Fedus 9 lifted. Everywhere. Today, a biker's leg is almost severed and the team is scrambled to save it. Oh. All right, pal. There's a tense rescue operation to save a trapped farmer. The gentleman's fallen through some rotten planks and he's fallen probably about 15 foot into a ditch in the bottom of an old silo and he's in quite a lot of pain. And there's a bizarre accident on a remote moorland road. So. Sheet ran out. My right knee took a lot of the impact. Hello, ambulance service. Is a patient breathing? I uh, somebody's just come off the motorbike. I've run for an ambulance. Clear left here. Good traffic. Can I make man and alpha lift in deposit into the south doctor? Seconds count in every emergency, but today's case is especially time critical. Oh, my God, his foot's hanging off. It's all right. It's off his leg. No, no, he's listed at 21. Is he close here? I can't go. We've been tasked to a job in Doncaster. Reports of somebody who's fallen from a quad bike and has amputated the lower part of his leg. Get a car, McKay. Tell me exactly what happened. I don't know. I just heard him screaming. A bell! Bell, Darren! Is there any serious bleeding? Oh, oh, my God, there's blood everywhere. It's going to be a tricky case. You tend to get limbs ripped off rather than uh, kind of a, a nice, clean amputation. You listen carefully. I want you to locate all the amputated parts or skin and place them in a clean plastic bag, OK? Whether the part of the limb that's come off is worth saving or is intact enough to save is something we'll have to find out. Paramedics Pete and Matt are preparing to give the biker rapid relief within seconds of touchdown. A dose of the powerful painkiller, ketamine. Uh, visual down below now. It's where this building site is. To the right of that, there's both sides of road. It's the right of road. Got it, got it. DCA's there, yeah. Yeah. Doncaster radar, and a made man and alpha is uh, laying down at the internet at Bentley. Thankfully, the crash has happened next to an ideal landing site. But dust kicked up by the rotors is blinding Ian. Hello. Hello. All right, Ali. Hey, we've got a 40-year-old man for you. Let's oh, yeah. it against that post. Yes. His leg. He's actually hopped along to this point. Okay. okay. All right. No head injuries. No other injuries. Not knocked out. Can remember everything. Usual fit and healthy. BPs and everything have been bang on. Right. See if we can get him sorted then. All right, Rob. Yeah. What do we call him again? Mike. Mick. Mick. Hey, up, Mick. How are we doing all right? Mm. My name's Matthew. All right. Mechanical engineer Mick Bates was delivering the motorised trike to a customer. Now his right leg is all but severed below the knee. So this stuff I'm going to give you, strong stuff, ketamine, all right. Makes you feel, well, you know, really funny. We're going to give it you, and then as soon as I can see that you've had effect from it, we'll try moving your leg, OK? Yeah. So uncomfortable later. I know, buddy. I know. We'll get you up shortly. His wife, Emma, is trying to comfort him. Mike, I'm just behind you. Uh, Ketterin's in. We're just going to have to get this on board and uh, manipulate his leg. Ketterin will allow them to move Mick. All right, Mike. Can you start to feel that at all? Yeah, well, well. well. You can? Right, Mike, I'm not going to lie to you. We're going to start moving you very shortly, all right? OK. It's a catastrophic injury. The chances of saving his lower leg are slim. 
Yeah, that's well, literally that's just tissue. It's just tissue around. I don't think that they're not viable there. I don't think we have either. They're applying a tourniquet. Can you feel us messing about down by your leg? There's a risk yeah. that when they move him, he'll lose a lot of blood. I'm sorry. Oh. All right, buddy, I know, I know. Yeah, go tight around it. It's going to start losing otherwise. Okay. Yep. If surgeons are to reattach the leg, it must be done quickly. The clock's ticking. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. We roll him over. Yep. Get this Ready when you are. Yeah, like, we need to bring that other leg on the mat. We're not going to be able to get this in. Yeah. You strain your leg. Relax your knee. Mick's leg is attached only by a tendon. A bit of skin. Mm. Yeah, it's gone. It's just the skin. I'm just trying to maintain just viability of this bit here. Just keep that as it is there. Keep that out of there, and then it Ooh. takes the bone away. All right. So all we need to do is pop him on that for transfer. Yes. We're not. Yeah. We're not doing him no. to immobilise. No. Okay. Thankfully, Mick will remember little of his ordeal. A side effect of ketamine is temporary amnesia. He's at 30, so we've got another 70. Once we move him up onto the stretch, I'll give him a drop more. All right. Let's go. The race is on to save Mick's leg. Right, ready, steady, lift. Right, I'll just skin all the ring. How old's Mike, please? Matt is alerting the surgical team at the Northern General Hospital in Sheffield, 20 miles away. Hello, mate. It's uh, Matthew, one of our crew paramedics. I've got a trauma call for you. Low speed on a motorised trike. Stuck his foot out to come round a corner and it's trapped it against the post. We've got Apart from tendons holding on, an amputation of his right, well, just, just above his right ankle. He's experiencing phantom pains. Yeah, yeah I'll just push him in. Oh, big toe. Your toe? Which toe? Big toe. Which one? Big toe. Your left leg or right? All right. Injuries as serious as Mick's are rare, even for air ambulance crews. If he'd had that trout, I think oh, it would have been a case of yeah. outritating that, wouldn't it? I think so, yeah. Thanks to the speed of the chopper, Mick's circling the trauma centre just 10 minutes after takeoff. It's Pilot Ian's first visit to the brand new helipad. See the white building? Let me put the white building. Yep. And come to the right, there's a bigger block of yep. like a lot of windows. It's between the two, just beyond the left hand corner of this gotcha. bigger one. Pete's been before. It's metres from Resus and the waiting surgeons. A little helipad. And it's from 99 on the pad to Norgen, over. In the next few minutes, the decision will be taken to try and reattach Mick's leg or perform a full amputation. Right, quick, quick as I can. Could you go and book him in or something, you think? The surgeon's decision will change his life. It's high summer in North Yorkshire, and the farmers are getting ready for harvest. But in a barn near the seaside town of Filey, there's been a serious accident. At Yorkshire Air Ambulance headquarters, 60 miles away, dispatcher Martin Brooks is on the case. I'm going to set him off to the corn dryer. Right, I've got a job for you. Filey. Someone's fallen down a, a hole in a corn dryer. It looks like they're trapped. Paramedics Kit and Aidy are flying to the rescue from their base at RAF Topcliffe. Head left ankle. Helimed 9 now. Helimed 99 is heading east at 150 miles an hour. Helimed 99, just wanted to give me an update on this call, please. Hey, Roger. Uh... He has got leg injuries. He is still physically trapped down a 15-foot drop. Fire service are now on route. Should be there shortly. The accidents happened near the 400-foot high cliffs of Yorkshire's dramatic holiday coast. Right, oh, no, London. On the family farm, a major operation is underway to rescue farmer David Bradley. Alone and in agony, lying in pitch blackness in a filthy underground pit used to dry crops. The gentleman's fallen through some rotten planks and he's fallen probably about 15 foot into a ditch at the bottom of an old silo. He's got a broken ankle and some other injuries and he's in quite a lot of pain. 
At the moment, it's not safe for anyone to get in there with him. We've managed to get a firefighter um, down near him, and they're just working on getting him out before we can start treating him. A local doctor has been unable to reach their patient. Ideally, it might need pain management, which might need a cannula and IV. Yeah. But we might, this might be one of those situations where it's better to get him out, actually. I think you're probably right. Either that or we'll put someone from heart down there and they do that sort of thing. David's worried mother and wife have rushed to the scene. You can't really get near him because it's a bit unsafe. Firefighters trained to rescue casualties from the nearby cliffs have been called in. Legs, please. Their patients lying in filthy conditions with a badly broken leg. Kit is going down to administer painkillers. Out of sight and in almost complete darkness, he must try to assess David's injuries. His first discovery is worrying. Their patient's blood pressure is low. He could be bleeding internally. Kit's down there at the moment, so he can um, put a cannula in and give him some um, decent pain relief to make it all a bit more comfortable for him. But the gentleman's got his leg wedged in somewhere and stuck. And it appears that it's broken and trapped at the same time. It's a dangerous situation. There's a real risk the rescuers could also become casualties. To save David, they're going to need ingenuity and courage. In a North Yorkshire farmyard, a complex rescue operation is underway. Uh, let's go medic one. Medic one, go ahead. Yeah, Kit's just uh, gone down the hole. They're just about to sort of extricate this gentleman. Not really sure about his injuries. It just seems to be lower limb at the moment. To, to what extent, we're not sure because he's still a little bit stuck. So once we get him out, I'll give you a further update. Oh, Roger, I'll receive. Many thanks. What we're going to do when we get him here? How are we going to get him from? Good point. I think he'll be. I think he'll be straight out and over them, over them, over them bars. Then what, like swinging? Yeah, because this is all rotten. This one. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm just trying to think how they're going to get him to where and where we can put the stretcher. Turn him like on a hoist. Yeah. Okay. Gentleman will get hoisted up. Maybe suspended from the strop at the top. There's all this floor's rotten, so we can't bring him this way, which is how he's ended up in there in the first place. And then we're going to have to swing him and, and lay him down like a hoist onto a, onto um, a, a rescue stretcher that the fire brigade have got, and then we can safely drag him over this precarious area, which is dangerous, and onto the stretcher. Just take up the tension. Just take up the just take tension. Farmer David Bradley has been given ketamine to dull the pain as he's hauled out of the pit. Get on either side of it, let's feed him up. He'll remember little of this. Rest there, rest! His ankle's badly broken and there's a very high risk of infection. For the Fire Brigade Cliff Rescue Team, it's been an unusual mission. It was stuck well, but we do train for eventualities. And it was a, for us, it was a simple scenario. We do cliffs and any uh, tall silos, any deep drop, we can effect rescues there, no problem. It was quite quick. I don't know where it was from start to finish, but from our point of view, it was straightforward. It was a smooth operation and very pleased with the outcome. And now he's got a nice ride. Yeah. They're examining David and there are some worrying signs. Oh, David's got a badly broken left leg and he did have low blood pressure when we were in the pit as well, so we don't know whether he's got some internal injuries. Um, at the moment, we're trying to stabilise his pelvis in case, in case that's fractured and uh, we're just trying to make sure that there's nothing that we're missing. If he is bleeding internally, time is of the essence. He urgently needs hospital no. care. Airway breathing is fine and then you've obviously got your, your injury there that you've dealt with. Brilliant. He was very fortunate to be found so quickly. The outcome could have been very different. Horrible, really awful, really cramped conditions, really difficult to work in, really slippery, no real good handholds or footholds or anything like that. It was safe to go down, the floor was stable, but it was very, very slippery around the patient and you couldn't get to his arms or legs because they were trapped by uh, wooden boards. So it was very difficult working conditions. The firefighters who use their rescue skills to haul David out of the pit are helping deliver him to Helimed 99. We're going to head to the other side of the aircraft and he's going to come in feet first. Ready, steady, lift and feed in. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep pushing. And there. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, chap. Have you been in a helicopter before? No. So they're quite. I'm a bit out of Yorkshire. Great Yorkshire Cove when I was about three years old. Ah. Kit can't forget the smell of the pit. Don't you want to take that smell with you? Oh, I love it. Did it hurt when you came out the hole? Uh, I can't really remember what. No, good. No, that's, well, that, that's kind of half why we give the medicine, because it kind of makes you forget what happened. The worst bit of it. And then we're nearly ready to go, Chris. No, no, I'm good. It's a 15-minute flight to the trauma unit in Hull. The team know that with harvest approaching, David is unlikely to be the last injured farmer of the summer. They have all sorts of really dangerous machines and people get trampled by livestock. The farm yards have got all sorts of hazards, so we've got quite a few who've uh, hurt themselves. It can be quite a dangerous occupation, I think. Tomorrow, David was due to be jetting off for a family holiday in Florida. Instead, he's touching down at Hull Royal Infirmary. Oh, no, I landed. X-rays and scans are being prepared for David. His prognosis is uncertain. On a warm summer's weekend, paramedics are on their way to a bizarre accident near Leeds. Yeah, I mean, it's Lee on the air desk. Just a little heli meds available if required on this detail over. <laughs> At Air Ambulance HQ, dispatcher Lee Greenwood is offering the team's help. I've got a job for you. Michael Tucker, Helimed 99, up a lifting of the parting hour, but Sherman and Elmwood Michael. The actual grid is on a railway line, on a, oh. state, a uh, level crossing. Oh. Airless 99 lifted on route to Sherman. Yeah, that's all received. You've got an RRB and an ambulance on the other. In the middle of a wood, an elderly man has become the victim of a hit-and-run accident. It's a, a place that we go quite regular for, for motorcyclists and some of them in quite bad conditions. Valley, down there to the right. Visual. Uh, there's no nine visual scene. Oh, it's further on, Chris. Can you see on the bend of the wood? Oh, is there an off-road uh, motorcycle? Apparently so. Right. Have you got your waders on, right? It's tricky terrain. The accidents happened on a track at the bottom of a steep ravine. This is uh, Dave, 73 year old gentleman. He's been basically out in the woods here walking. Yeah. And there's been these guys generally around being on the bikes. And this guy on a motorcycle, scrambling bike, has come from nowhere in All right. direction. All right, okay. And has actually gone into Dave on his right side. Which is then flipped David off. McKay is 73. He was out for a walk in the woods when the off-road biker hit him. He has multiple injuries. He's complaining of full right leg pain, discomfort. He's got pain in his right uh, iliac area. Obviously, his right shoulder is giving him a bit of discomfort. He's not quite sure whether he's lost any consciousness because it's obviously happened very, very quickly. Yeah, so we're thinking he might, might be pelvis as well, so... Yeah, yeah, we need a pelvic band. Oh. Will he start 100% on air, or...? No, we're uh, 94. 94 on air. We'll either relocate over there or over there, and then it's flat. Yeah, so... Paramedic Kit is working on getting their patient out. It's going to be tricky. So we're, we're going to relocate the, uh, the helicopter to this, this field area here. There's a really steep banking that we can't can't really safely climb up without, without the use of ropes, I would think. So the, the safest, quickest option is for us to relocate the helicopter and in between the it's about six or seven of us will manage to carry him to the helicopter with short distance. Where's that hurting okay, you? Just, I know it's going to hurt. I need to get this arm straight. There. Is it there? What about there? Pilot Chris is dropping Helimed 99 into a clearing in the woods. It seems the guilty biker simply rode off, leaving David badly injured. Go ahead. Could you please check that the police have been informed that this is a hit and run? Uh, no, that's the negative. So definitely a uh, hit and run over. Uh, hit and run, yeah. Off road. So the uh, chap who's hit was done one. Hiya, I've got um, a trauma call for you. David's injured his back. 
He's having difficulty breathing, and it's feared he's fractured his pelvis. Any one injury could kill him. They're just carrying him to the aircraft while I'm talking to you on the phone, so... Um, we're looking at about quarter to, to ten to the hour. All right, see you, bye. Another party of bikers who came across David and raised the alarm are helping to carry him to the chopper. Just try not to let it down until he's sort of fully in, if you can, guys. How are we doing, David? You feel all right? Yeah. Yeah? When did he last have morphine? Not so long ago. Right, well, we're going to go in the helicopter, OK? It gets a bit noisy in a minute. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Right, we're just going to get you inside out of sun, or else you'll have sunburn as well. Speed is essential. The accident has happened barely 10 minutes by air from Leeds General Infirmary. But Andy is still concerned for David's life. Air 99 lifted on route 12, Jack. Yeah, that's all we see. Heli Decker waiting for you over. The nature of what's happened, anything could happen with this patient, so the sooner that is in the major trauma centre, the better, really. Uh, we've given plenty of pain relief, it, but every time he took it, he just he, 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 he jumped off the stretcher. So he could assume it's quite painful. He is guarding his abdomen a little bit, so whether or not he's got something going on internally. Uh, but he's also complaining of pain around his pelvis. LGI, LGI, Helimed 99 with you again uh, shortly in about uh, two minutes. Pilot Chris is warning the LGI helipad of David's arrival. Fairness, Nani, on approach, LGI. The hospital trauma team's attempts to save their patient's life will begin in the next five minutes. Cattle in Britain's farmyards are getting beefier. Instead of being castrated and turned into docile bullocks, farmers are keeping more bulls. They grow faster and produce more meat, but they're also more aggressive. Hello, you right? And today, paramedic Al Day is about to come face to face with their power. Somebody that's been knocked over by a bull, which is almost like my speciality. On a farm near Ripon, a farmer is lying critically injured after being attacked in a fold yard. It's, um, it's clear, yeah. Al has seen the damage a bull can inflict. Can't jump on some quite serious injuries because bulls are pretty heavy. Getting off half a ton, so might be hit by a small car. The disadvantage of bulls is they don't have any crumple zones or airbags. So you're probably worse being hit by a bull than a small car when I think about it. Did that for day, I got a visual for the ambulance at the one o'clock. See that good, yeah. Paramedic Lee has identified the farm. But Pilot Steve's taking no chances. OK, there are animals in here as well, so I'm just going to stop here. Farmhands have corralled the bulls. Too late for farmer Andrew Leeming. Bulls um, lifted him up from behind him, thrown him up in the air. He's in agony with pain in his back and tingling in his arms and legs. Got pain sort of the mid thoracic area and paresthesia of both hands, more so in his left. Can you give me a pain score out of ten? Nine. Nine. His wife rushed to help after the attack. A bull came from behind, apparently, and put him up into the air. And he said he was up there forever, and then he landed flat on this cement floor, the back against the floor. But the bull didn't come anywhere near him after that. His symptoms are very worrying. He may have a serious spinal injury. OK, so we've got low T and mid lumbar. 57-year-old Andrew is going to be strapped to a rigid stretcher to protect his back. But the damage may already have been done. If you've got this back injury, it's probably easier just to immobilise it, to be on the safe side. I, um, I'll, I'll do that then. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Andrew's son removed the guilty animals. 
they were about to go to the abattoir. Being dad as stubborn as he is was saying, just get him in, just get him out, get him out, get him out. Uh, he said to, for me to move him, and I was like, no, that's not happening. I'd rather not be immobilised if I have a choice. Yeah, I know. No. <laughs> Their patients lying in straw and manure. Sorry about the uh, look. I don't think much of this aftershave you're wearing, Andrew, I have to say. What is it? Is it high karate? We're going to put it just use the sleeping bag for cheap, yeah. Lee's preparing Helimed 99. The team try to keep the aircraft clinically clean, but that could be tricky today. Keep this on here? Yes, we'll do that, yeah. We'll put it in that, keep yeah. it even clean. It'll contain all the um, shit. <laughs> the attack was a surprise, but bulls are unpredictable and more dangerous than cows or bullocks. Sometimes they can feel a bit claustrophobic, so that work gets them wound up. When they get wound up, they can do what they want, can't they? There's no chance, really. Soon, they'll be beef burgers. They go for McDonald's, uh, that's, um, they'll go to an abattoir there and then sent off and McDonald's will take the cuts, so. But too late for Andrew. He's got um, some pain in the centre of his back and his lower back, which could be um, as, as a result of a fracture. And there's some pins and needles in his arms, which is normally a result of something pressing on one of the nerves. So we need to make sure he doesn't move around too much and, um, before he's, he's had a chance to have an X-ray and a scan at uh, the hospital. The farmer knows the local paramedic who first came to his rescue. I'm going to buy this chap a pint next time he sees him. <laughs> Do I get a drink yeah, as well? I've got that, I've, we I've don't got drink that. pints on the air ambulance, so we only drink I pins. <laughs> I'm going to take your head, OK? Yeah. And then we're just going to roll you onto the little board that we've got behind you. You don't need to do anything, yeah. OK? One wrong move could paralyse their okay, patient. Yeah. Ready, steady, roll. Deep breaths for us, Andrew. Yeah, happy. Give me a deep breath again. And again. Okay. Do you have a feel at your tummy? Okay. What happened then? Tummy hurts, does it? Yeah. Okay, let's have a little look at that then. All right, just relax. It could be a sign Andrew's abdomen is filling with blood. It can kill. It's quite tense in here, yeah. just like it's <sighs> tense in it. Al wants to ensure Andrew is comfortable before he's moved. Morphine isn't working. Perhaps ketamine will. We're going to give you a bit of a stronger painkiller, OK? Ketamine, it's called. Use it for horses. It sort of uh, dissociates you from the pain. And you might feel, you know, a bit like you're kind of watching what's going on from the other side of the room or something like that. Right. Go with the flow, as they say. Yeah. OK. Has, any, has anything changed since we've got you on there at all? No. You, no, you had a bit, of, is it a bit of tingling in your limbs. Is that still there, or is it...? Yeah, just... Uh, my legs tingle a bit. Your legs tingle a little bit, do they? Until yeah. you've been through scanner at the hospital, we're not too sure what's going on. No. Ketamine can give patients hallucinations. In Andrew, it's bringing out his deep bond with his livestock. Don't take it out of the no. animal. No. We won't, don't worry. Oh, it's... We're just getting them loaded and getting them away. Yeah, it wasn't his fault. No, it wasn't, was it? Still going to McDonald's, though. We'll take two at side, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take one at bottom, yeah? Please. It's all right, don't worry, Andrew, you're all right. Make sure that the animal is not happy. Can we all tell Andrew the animal's not going to be hurt? You know, it's fine. No, the animal's going to be fine, don't worry, Andrew. The animal must not be hurt. No, it won't, don't worry. That's all right, then. OK, just relax for us now. Yeah. OK, nice deep breaths. Think about nice things going on over there. Uh, there we go. Ready, steady, uh, lift. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. Uh, is that better now, Andrew? That's fantastic. Good. <laughs> Do you remember I gave you that strong painkiller and I said it might make you feel a yeah. bit strange? OK, that's all it is. Don't worry about it. That's it. So feet first towards that rather dashing yeah. pilot chap there. Yeah. He really does drink pims. Does he? Yeah. All right, we'll get these beasts loaded, Dad. No way. 
He's still yeah. worrying about his animals. Treat them with respect. We, we, they will, don't worry. Don't worry, Mr Bell's here. Yeah, treat them with respect. Just going to move to the back end of the field. Yep. They're taking off for the trauma centre in Leeds, 25 miles away. That'll do. Fred S99's lifted reach in LGI. Al's carefully monitoring Andrew's condition. The pain in his abdomen is still concerning him. It could be because um, he's some internal um, bleeding inside his tummy and um, the natural sort of protective uh, mechanism is for your abdominal muscles to tense to kind of protect your abdomen in, in that circumstance. Uh, There's just the, the, the three red cranes. Um, yeah, they're directly ahead of us now. Yeah, We've got yeah, the yellow yeah. ones to the right. Yeah, uh, we're going to go right of everything there. Yeah, I've got two of the red ones. The trauma team must deal with multiple threats to their patient's survival. Ready, steady, move. Internal bleeding and a spinal injury are uppermost in their minds. Tensing in his right upper quadrant. Um, he'd reported some pins and needles in his both forearms. Only x-rays will reveal which is the most serious. We've given him 15 milligrams of ketamine because he was still not really on top of the pain. Sure. After 40 years in farming, Andrew's career, even his life, are in the balance. Meals are one of the casualties when a 999 call comes in to Halimed headquarters. It's a motorbike, I think you've got a collision with sheep. Oh dear, is it just the one motorbike involved? It's by the nose. Dispatcher Al Day's dining at his desk. Okay. Job 6050. Yeah, motorbike that's hit a sheep. Well, that covered my dinner. But it's worse for paramedic Andy Armitage. His hot lunch is off the menu. Okay, now. Do you want half? I've had one already. Are you sure? That, yeah. The team's heading out into the Yorkshire Dales. It's an area where sheep farming is big business, and few roads have fences. It's a dangerous combination for man and animal. Basic service 1007, uh, explore with four PB, just lifted top cliff, we mount to an incident at uh, Keld. The Dales cover 700 square miles. It's a massive area, and ambulance crews often have to drive long distances to reach their patients. There's no ambulance for about 30 minutes. That's the closest resource in, in, in Yorkshire to him. Then I reckon the road is in the valley here, so we're, we're on the nose now. Roger. I think we'll just put it on uh, where that gully is. Over the road, my side. My kids over the road. Look to the right, mate. Good for that. I'll let you shut down, I think. Roger, Dodger. The accidents happened a few miles from Yorkshire's remote border with Cumbria. The sheep ran out in front of biker Tom Hicklin. It came off worst. He's really took it out, hasn't he? He's split it in two, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> no, then. You've been taking sheep, out, haven't you? <laughs> Lamp for dinner. He's in pain. His knee took the full force of the impact so with the road. Keep yourself nice and still if you can. Just tell me what, what's happened and where, where your pain is and stuff like that. So, the sheep ran out. My right knee took a lot of the impact, followed by uh, right arm and left arm. My shoulder's hurting. Right knee, left shoulder. Left, left shoulder, arm. but right knee. And it feels like there's a lot of fluid in the knee and I'm starting to lose mobility in the knee joint. It's okay. starting to hurt. How old are you, Tom? 32. It's taken ground paramedics half an hour to reach the scene, even on blue lights. Um, do you want to just grab your stretcher and yeah. a scoop? Yeah. Um, just to, really, just to get him off at the floor. My mate's going to bring monitor down, we'll do some obs, and then we'll get him on, we'll have a look. Yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. We'll give you some foot pain. Okay. Hey, hey, can you take paracetamol, ibuprofen? Yeah, no we can give you some morphine. I think your clothes have done, have, have done your done the job. They've done the job, haven't they? Well, it's a big, big sheep as well, isn't it? Right. I think we're going to struggle to get your jacket off, aren't we? Tom was out for a ride with friends when the accident happened. Locals are used to crashes involving livestock. All the way along they've been darting out, so I've been going quite a steady pace. But this one, 
went one way and then went the other. So. But there can be 30 yards in the field and they fell. You'll get to 30 foot from them and they'll charge down the fell and across the front of you. Oh yeah, they're always at it. Let me just, let me just put that on your hand. Andy is taking every precaution in case Tom has further undetected injuries. Are you, can you lift your leg at all? <sighs> Not well. Oh, that's really heavy. I'm going to have to cut him out. His protective gear is about to pay the price. That looks a bit swollen, doesn't it? Is that, is that swollen yeah. there? Yeah, massively. How tall are you, fella? Six. Six one. They're going to strap Tom to a rigid spinal stretcher. Where's your pain now? In your knee? Yeah, all up the leg. So, ready, steady, lift. That's it. Right, OK. Take a breath for this. Tom's a long way from hospital care. The nearest trauma centre is almost 40 miles away. If I said to you, lift that knee up. That's where I'm getting to. Just, Just there. don't want to move. OK. They're going to fly him to Middlesbrough. Tom's injuries are painful, but appear not to be life-threatening. Bikers have died in collisions with sheep on the moors. So if we go uh, directly for the highest point, what is it? 2191, that'll be the good bearing. It's a 20-minute flight from the accident scene to the James Cook Hospital. It would take almost two hours by road. Thanks to this flight, X-rays will reveal the extent of Tom's injuries within the hour. Minster FM weather at noon, and it's going to be a warm summer's afternoon across North Yorkshire, with top temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius, that's 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and even warmer in the Dales, but there's a chance of a shower. Hello, could you go to Pateley Bridge, please? The crew are walking uphill from their ambulance, and they've walked about half a mile and they still haven't got to the patient, so um, it's a, a definite access issue. Helimed 99 is heading back to the Dales for a horse rider in trouble. About 245, straight over Ripon. Yeah. Roger, thank you. And on a day like this, we hope we don't need windscreen wipers, eh? Never speak too soon. We are in Yorkshire. God's country. A land crew has got to, got to an incident where somebody's fallen from a horse. So the dispatcher has tasked us. Uh, we might be first on team when we get there. On well, this road opposite here just drops down on the side into Bainley. Ambulance at 2 o'clock. Farmyard. Yep, visual with that map. Cheers. Paramedics Matt and Pete are touching down in a remote field in Nidderdale to help out the local ambulance crew. So this back pain, any any neuro deficit or anything? Um, no. She said a, a tit. Toes went tingling, but we don't know whether it's maybe the ends or not, so we're not okay. sure. Linda Davenport was thrown, then crushed by her mount, Boris. Which is yours, the brown one? The one like... that's got a great big mouthful of grass, okay. and it's landed on top of it. I managed to stay on the twat. Any pins and needles at the moment? Left foot. Left foot? Oh, yeah, and right foot. And right foot. Fingers? <laughs> her no. symptoms could be the first right. sign of a serious spinal injury. The, uh, the pain relief my colleagues have given you, has that helped? Has it worked? I th well, yeah, it just feels a dull numb in my back now. OK. Her horse is 18 hands high. That's more than six feet. <laughs> this is Boris. He's not very popular with me either at the moment, so, yeah, so... Um, just waiting, just hope she's all right. Boris weighs in at more than half a tonne. There's the potential that we've done some damage inside. There's def definitely something in the pelvis area that's gone amiss. OK. We were just going round in a big loop. I bent down to open the gate, just um, on this one, turned round to find um, the horse and Linda on a, in a pile on the floor. Right. Linda doesn't want to make a fuss. We're going to probably take you to Leeds, but I'll give him a call. Make it Harrogate, please. Well, Leeds Harrogate is, has a preference, please. If this horse we're in the middle of bloody nowhere. If this horse has come right down on top of you, then Leeds is the best place no. to be. But the team know her injuries could be life-changing. Yeah, yep. Many local hospitals now deal only with non-critical injuries. Linda should go to a major trauma centre. Uh, 18 hands high. It's reared up, it's gone down, and she's fallen, and the horse has fallen on her, onto her pelvis, onto her abdomen. 
You've got pain lower lumbar, uh, central, tingling in both feet. So yep. BP is 102 systolic, so we'll just treat worst case, I think. The pain in her hip could mean she's broken her pelvis. It's a life-threatening injury. So LGI. LGI? Yeah. yeah. Really? It's not that bad. That. I think it'll do. And despite the pain, she still doesn't want to go to the big city hospital. It's the team's job to persuade her Leeds is the best destination. Now, because of the injuries you've got and we're querying you might have hurt something around your pelvis, you'd go automatically go to Leeds. Oh, really? Yeah, Harrogate wouldn't accept oh, you. Oh, oh, why? They're fine! Because they don't deal with that type of injury anymore. And eventually, Linda reluctantly agrees. You'd rather us do things right, wouldn't you? Yeah, no. I know. It's only made 9 9. We're going to be about 10 minutes once we're in the air, so I reckon about 25 past to you. OK, keep going, keep the weight off, keep going, OK, down on there, push, 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 keep going, keep going, lovely. Into the hover and we'll do a clear area departure to the uh, right of the farm, I think. There's no time to waste. The team know her injuries are potentially life-threatening, but Linda is remaining cheerful. It's a very good spirits and sometimes that's because of the medication. It helps keep the mood light, it helps people's prognosis as well. Major Radar, head of Med 99, Alpha, Finals, LGI. It's just two minutes from the heli deck to resus. Linda will soon be scanned and x-rayed, but it's vital doctors understand how the accident happened first. OK, this is 34-year-old Linda. She fell from an 18-hand horse, which is approximately seven feet tall. She's fallen... Matt knows the forces Boris inflicted on his rider were massive. There's the potential for internal injuries because the horse has landed on her. There's the potential for a serious back injury because of the height she's fallen. We will treat the whole thing as a package and then you're basically not leaving any stone unturned as far as treatment goes. The results of the medical tests could change Linda's life forever. The precautions the team took probably saved Linda from permanent disability. She'd broken her spine in three places and one vertebrae was crushed. The pieces of bone had gone into my spinal nerve uh, and had to be removed by the surgeons, um, which was causing me quite a lot of pain down my legs. Her ankle was also fractured, but she's forgiven Boris. Yeah, I've been to see the horse since. Um, he was very well and he, he was very apologetic. I'll give him his due and hopefully fingers crossed. Yeah, I might sit on a horse again. Happily, farmer David escaped his 15-foot fall with just a badly broken leg. He was off work for three months, but at least the travel insurance paid out on the family holiday to Florida. Sadly, biker Mick's leg could not be reattached. We weren't able to save the leg, but there wasn't much of it at the time anyway. I didn't really deal with wanting to be in a wheelchair. But as you can see, I am sat in a wheelchair now and telling a few weeks' time when I possibly get a leg fit in and I'm just dying to run, not walk. Right. Farmer Andrew had an unstable spinal fracture, but he still doesn't blame his bulls. Treat them with respect. We, we, they will, don't worry. Pensioner David, knocked down during a walk in the woods, also fractured his spine, as well as ten ribs. He underwent surgery and spent three weeks in hospital. The biker responsible has never been caught. Biker Tom cracked a kneecap and fractured his shin. He's now wary of moorland sheep. Ah!